Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in and welcome back to yet another episode of Proudly Movelin. How you guys doing? You guys good? Man, it's always a pleasure to have you turn in and check out what Mr. J has to say. And it's even a, a greater pleasure to have you leave a comment and give us that thumbs up because the more thumbs up you give us, the more YouTube understands what we are trying to do on Proudly Marvel and Yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, if this is your first time coming through and this is your first time seeing this face, man, they call me Mr. J. I'm a proud Marvelandian man living in the diaspora. And I do drop vlogs every now and then talking about issues affecting my continent because you know what? Yes, I am a proud son of the soul and it is my duty to give him my own two quarters. You feel me? Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we get started, I would like to say this, man. Um, if you're not done yet, please do not forget, man. Do subscribe. It would be a greater honor to always have you turn in. And let's communicate. Let's talk. You feel me? Now, today, man, our vlog for today, we are going to talk about something really interesting. And um, I always bring out these topics and I throw it back at you as a debate so that you can leave your comment and we share let's let's exchange you feel me it's good for our intelligence It's good for our conversation about the situation in africa because yes africa is the mother's land you feel me now ladies and gentlemen today i want us to talk about the republic of guinea yes the republic of guinea man a beautiful country out there in africa and the West Africa, the Sahel region, it is actually part of the Sahel countries. And uh, today I want us to talk about the situation of that country. And uh, we all know that for a couple of months now, that country has been under uh, a military strongman, Colonel Mamadi Dambuya. And uh, we are going to talk a little bit about it. But before we get started talking about the situation in the country, man, I want to give you a little bit of history, man. Guinea. It's a former French colony, yes, that beautiful country was one of the first French colonies to gain its independence in 1958 under Ahmed Sekou Touré, yes, one of the first, man. And this beautiful little country out there, man, is one of the world's top producer of bauxite. Yeah, we use bauxite in the production of aluminium, man. Anything around you, aluminium, you got to understand that it comes from this beautiful country. Yes, another thing people don't really know about this beautiful little country is that this country has hosts a couple of festivals every year to celebrate. And one of these festivals is called the Nimba Dance Festival. Man, this festival people put on mask, the Nimba mask, which is actually a symbol. It symbolizes fertility and prosperity. I bet you didn't know that. Yes, I know you didn't know that, ladies and gentlemen. And, um... The Republic of Guinea is also known for its traditional medicinal practices, man. Yes, a whole lot of healers, and I'm talking about people who use herbs, natural remedies from earth. They can treat a whole lot of sicknesses and diseases just using these, the power of nature. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that being said, man, for a couple of months now, this beautiful little country has been on the... The strongmanship, I will not say military junta, the strongmanship of Colonel Mamadi Dambuya. Now, we all know that uh, for the past couple of months, a whole lot of countries out in that region of Africa uh, have been under military officers and military juntas. I don't even know why the West terms them as military junters. They are presidents already, man, but that's my opinion. So, um, this man has been... Um, steadily doing one or two things which has made a whole lot of us sons and daughters of africa scratch the head and one of the reasons i decided to talk about, about this is because when we look at everything that's happening in the sahel region and when we look at all of these countries that have been under military rulers we see that some of these countries are doing, they are moving and they are taking a U-turn away from the colonial master and imperialist France. Whereas, this leader in the Republic of Guinea, Colonel Mamadi Dambuya, he seems to be doing the opposite. 
and the reason of this vlog once again is for us to try to understand why this man is not making the waves he's not resonating with the rest of africa like these other leaders especially those from burkina faso the republic of niger and mali we're going to talk about it we want to understand what things why things happen the way they happen that is why a proud motherland is here to actually dissect and give you the juice you smell me ladies and gentlemen um the first thing we want to talk about is this man ever since this man came into power it seems as if this man has been backpedaling and just to give you a brief history about this man this man was the former colonial puppets right hand man i'm talking about president alpha conde this man was always with alpha conde man this man was the person that was always walking around with alpha conde and then he turns around and orchestrated a coup and then he became the president now we, we there's a whole lot of debate if he did orchestrate this coup on his by himself or it was because Alpha Conde was starting to become a staunch critic of the French system and mentality. So France was like, you know what? Let's put in the convenient man. Let's put in this guy, man, Mamadi Dambuya. Now, ladies and gentlemen, so many people do not know that under Alpha Conde, man, Mamadi's name was actually under a sanction list by the European Union for human rights violations. Yes, it is said that this man was involved with a whole lot of human rights abuses, which if you ask me the question, I do not understand why the European Union would know that this man, especially France, would know that this man, his name is under sanction, and yet they will still work with him. Talk about being crazy and talking about serving their purpose, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, Mamadi Dambuyu came into power. He overthrew Alpha Conde, who became a critic of the French regime. And ever since, while the other military junters are taking steps to move away from colonial imperialist, this man seems to be doing the direct opposite. So, we need to know why. The first reason that this man seems to be doing the direct opposite, and this man is not even... He, his his vision and everything he does is not actually in line with what pan africanist thing is that this man is married to a french citizen yes colonel Dam mamadi dambuye is married to a french citizen and not just a french citizen but an active member of the french gendarmerie and she goes by the name Lorian Dambouye. Ne, I don't know what that is, Dabo or whatever. Yes, this man is married to a French citizen. Now, some of you might say, but Mr. J, is there anything wrong in getting married? No, no, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong in getting married to a French citizen. Because we have a couple of uh, French-speaking African colonies and your presidents who are actively married to French citizens. We know a whole lot of that. You know, I don't know if it's if it's a game or it's, it's, it's a prerequisite for some of them to stay in power. But this man is married to Lorraine Dambuya, who is an active member of the gendarmerie. Now, you'd think that you would get married to a French citizen and then you would take steps and things that will go contrary to her homeland it's gonna be difficult you feel me this is the first reason which i think that this man is actually not trying to do anything because once you take over power in a coup you should bring some level of change you should you should you should have a vision but it turns out this young leader in guinea the republic of guinea doesn't actually have any vision because before i continue ladies and gentlemen orchestrating the coup is because you are not happy you as in you in the military you are not happy with the civilian leadership you you are not convinced that the civilian leadership is going to help the general masses but when you orchestrate a coup and you come in as the military leader and then you cannot push the needle further you keep fumbling the ball you need to resign that is just my take. Now let's come back to the second reason, which it's very evident and clear to see that um, Colonel Mamadi Dambuye is actually taking the opposite direction as compared to the likes of uh, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, Asimi Goitsa, and uh, General Abdurrahman uh, uh, um, Chiani of uh, the Republic of, of Niger. Is because 
This man was trained in a French military academy called Ecole de Guerre, War College. Now, this war college is for militaries. So, France trained this man, which goes to assert the, 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 the conclusion that because Alpha Condé became critical of the French system of doing things, they just trained this guy to replace Alpha Condé. So this man was trained there, and then after his training, this man entered into what we call the Legions of France, the French Legion, a branch of the French military army that recruits foreigners who are interested in serving in the French military. And once you serve as a recruitee, and once you are recruited into the, into the uh, French Legion, you serve for three years, man, you, you qualify to have a citizenship. Or if you are wounded while in service in the line of duty, you automatically get French citizenship. So some of you brothers who keep dying in the Mediterranean, you want to take a look at this. Hey, Mr. J, I'm not doing promo for the French Legion, but I'm just saying this, man. Under this policy called French by a spill of blood, you can do that. So this man came off. Of the French military training. Now, mind you, he was trained by the French. He served under this French Legion for like five good years, and then he is married to an active gendarmerie from France. So, all of these few things put together, these things I just said, is is enough to tell us why this leader is not actually pushing the needle. It's enough to make us understand that this man, he was put there by France. And which is why when we talk about the coups and we talk about the progresses occurring in the Sahel region by these military junta's who took over power, we do not, the Republic of Guinea doesn't resonate with everybody. It doesn't resonate, which is crazy. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted us to talk about these things and we should understand because uh, Bob Marley talked about Africa uniting, and we are out here talking about unity. But when it comes to unity, it has to be from this type of leaders. Now, you took over power. Your neighbors are bonding. They are forming a force. They are going all for one, one for all. You are supposed to be with them, but this man seems to be standing out, and we are wondering why would you go to the UN General Assembly? You give such an important speech, but then in the grounds, you are not doing anything to push the needle. These other countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, the Republic of Niger, they kicked out all of their imperialists out. And the recent one was uh, the Republic of Niger, who just canceled the co his cooperation with uh, the United States and asked him to leave his territory. But this man is there, he's not done none of that. And then you start asking yourself, was this coup exactly like the one that took place in Gabon, or this was actually meant to be? So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just want to give, before we, 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 we close, see this man took over power and he's not been friends with a whole lot of these leaders that are taking drastic and radical moves against the French. This man has visited just one of these leaders and that is Asimi Goitza of the Republic of Mali. And this is explained because this man and Asimi Goitza, they attended a U.S. Army-led training in 2018 in Burkina Faso. But you see, when it comes to Burkina Faso of Captain Ibrahim Traoré and uh, Abdurrahman uh, Chiani of, of, of Niger, this guy doesn't want to even work with them. And it is also known that the reason why this man has some kind of bad blood between him and Captain Ibrahim Traoré is because Captain Ibrahim Traoré ousted his friend this man was in school in a, a, a call to get the war college, the army war college in France, which the person, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, ousted. Mind you, his name was Paul Henri Damiba. He was ousted and he was sent on exile to Togo, another French colony, which we will talk about that later. So this man has that bad beef, like, I'm not going to be a friend to somebody who ousted my friend, my college mate. 
So that is why he's not even interested in joining forces with all, with Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Because think about it: if you are a cool member too, a military junta, and your and your and your friends, your neighbors are forming a bond so that you guys can be strong. United we stand, divided we fall, but you don't want to. And then we have all this background information about you. It tells us one thing and only one thing. You are working for the imperialist. You are also a puppet. So I need you to say this with me, everybody. Motherland, I think this man needs to resign. I think Colonel Mamadi Dambuya of the Republic of Guinea needs to resign. I know some of my Guineans and some of my fans from Guinea and supporters of this man will come on there and try to say things. But we are experiencing a new wave, man. We are in a new era. If you cannot deliver the goods, resign. That's my time, but before I go, what do you think? Do you think that Mamadi Dambuya, after the speech he gave at the UN General Assembly 78, do you think that he's working for France? Do you think that France has his back, and which is why he has not kicked them out of this territory? Leave a comment, and that is my time. I love you, man. You know what? We are going to unite Africa with our sharing and conversation. Peace.